Shalom and welcome back to Expert on the Spot. My name is Raphael Meshulam. I'm a professor of medicinal chemistry at the Hebrew University and I'll be glad to answer uh, the questions you have uh, uh, given me. Uh, let us start with uh, Reuven. Now, Reuven says, I'm curious if there has been any valuable scientific evidence linking marijuana use to any sort of memory loss or negative effect on brain and brain function, and there are a few other uh, participants have, that have asked the same question. Well, here uh, the answer is uh, not straightforward. Uh, there is definitely memory loss uh, uh, if uh, uh, somebody uses uh, high levels of marijuana, and the loss is acute. So during acute use, one can see memory loss. Uh, the memory loss differs, but uh, apparently the memory loss is higher in those marijuana samples that contain high doses of THC and low doses of cannabidiol. Unfortunately, uh, most marijuana samples today contain only THC and essentially no cannabidiol, if any. I understand that this is going to change, but at the moment this is the situation and the answer is yes, there is acute memory loss during marijuana use if the amounts are uh, high. Uh, the question is if there is also a loss, not in an acute use, but over the years. And here the, the problem is more complicated. Normally one does not see any major changes. But if somebody uses marijuana over many years, high doses, one can certainly note certain memory changes. There is a question posed by Nava and she asks, what are your thoughts regarding the notion that marijuana is a, a gateway drug to harder drugs? Is there any evidence to support or counter this claim? Well, this is a not a simple question, because obviously people that use uh, heroin or cocaine previously used uh, uh, marijuana, most of them did. But then most of them also smoked tobacco, most of them also uh, uh, did all kinds of other things. So is there a natural step from one to the other? The answer today generally accepted is no. Um, if there is any movement from uh, a softer drug, marijuana, to a harder drug like heroin, apparently this move is social rather than uh, basic scientific. There is nothing in the marijuana plant or in the constituents that will lead a person to go from one drug to another. That particular uh, movement, if you wish, is due to social conditions uh, of various types. Probably the person that sells him the marijuana may uh, may sell him also other drugs. Sometimes he can and sometimes he cannot. So the answer is no. The next question concerns uh, a problem put forward by Shaked Geffen. Why is it illegal to import medications into Israel that are made from marijuana? Well, uh, this is not my specialty, but the answer is simple. Israel has signed all kinds of... Uh, international agreements uh, concerning uh, illicit drugs, marijuana, heroin, cocaine, and so on. So in order to import something, uh, any drug uh, that is uh, legally illicit, then one has to go through uh, many phases, has to get all kinds of uh, um, uh, agreements or ministries and so on. So it is not a simple drug to do that. It ha it's a legal problem and nothing else. Uh, there is a question uh, as follows. Does medicinal THC, the active component of marijuana, effectively cure some diseases or is its use restricted to a natural pain re reliever? Well, most drugs do not cure. Very few drugs cure. Antibiotics cure because they kill the microbes. Most drugs help with the effects of a drug and hopefully the body itself can uh, do something about the disease. Most cases, 
uh, we treat the symptoms. Sometimes we treat the disease itself, we try to kill the microbe or the cancer and so on, but most diseases are not cured by a drug. The same is true for THC. THC is well known to lower vomiting, to lower nausea due to cancer chemotherapy, to enhance appetite. We do not cure any disease here. We just treat symptoms. This is true for almost all uh, effects of marijuana. They have to do with uh, helping certain symptoms. It may be pain, it may be vomiting and so on. Not, it does not cure a disease. It does not cure anything. Caroline asks, if marijuana can help with arthritis, why is it that I had more pain when I used it? How can it be used other than smoked? Well, it's strange. Mostly, uh, marijuana reduces uh, uh, pain. Mostly, it reduces the uh, inflammation. Maybe the marijuana you used did not contain any cannabidiol. Again, tea, uh, marijuana contains two major constituents, THC and cannabidiol. The anti-inflammatory agent, the major one, is cannabidiol. If the marijuana you used didn't have cannabidiol, then the effect was uh, smaller or uh, none at all. So chances are that the marijuana you used. Uh, THC is the psychoactive component, and while it affects pain and uh, inflammation, its effects on inflammation are lower. Uh, you ask also whether it can be used in some other way in smoking. The answer is yes. We administer pure THC in oil, in olive oil, under the tongue. The effect is uh, uh, not as fast as smoking marijuana, but uh, it is uh, uh, more quantified. We know exactly how much we give and we can measure the effects in this way. Phyllis asks, what are the long-term effects of medical marijuana use in teenagers? But there is no great difference. The long-term effects are more or less as the long-term effects in uh, adults. The problem here is that um, teenagers are still growing. Uh, all the hormonal changes are uh, going up and down. Uh, there are all kinds of other things so that we cannot state explicitly the way we state with adults. Well, there are essentially no major side effects, no major long-term effects. Here, I'm not so sure that the uh, situation is exactly the same. Basically, people have not seen any major changes, any major long-term effects, but uh, I would strongly suggest if somebody is smoking marijuana just for, uh, for the fun of it, go down or uh, don't do it. Uh, we are not sure what the long-term effects are. The next question is by Yuval, who asks, uh, about the effects of cannabis on cancer? Well, it's a simple question. It's in a complicated answer. Uh, compounds against cancer are first tested uh, in vitro. That's not, not in an animal, but uh, in a test tube. And cancer, uh, many types of cancer, are really affected by, uh, by THC or cannabidiol. One sees that uh, uh, many of the cancers are destroyed or they are less active and so on. This is in, uh, uh, in the test tube. Then the next step is, are they active in uh, animals? And here, of course, we have many types of cancers. And the answer again is yes. In many cases, we see, when tested in animals, animals that have uh, been inoculated with a cancer, yes, there is an effect. The effect is not always very potent, but there is an effect. And um, we, many others, have done a lot of work in this area, and we have seen different effects. They are not a very, very potent compounds, but we have definitely seen effects. Unfortunately, uh, there is just one uh, a published experiment with THC in humans. And this is against a uh, uh, terrible disease called glioma. It causes uh, uh, death in essentially 100% of the cases. 
it has been administered THC directly into the brain and um, the, uh, the people that did the experiments in Spain saw that uh, some of the patients uh, died uh, a few months later than expected. Not much, all of them died, but at least a few more months uh, later. Uh, but this is the only one, this is strange. Uh, but actually very, very few experiments have been done in humans with uh, uh, THC and I can only say I regret that because we have in animals a long list of uh, cancers that have been treated successfully and this is not the case uh, in humans unfortunately. We normally speak of the advances of medicine and how better our medicine is than it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Well, I beg to differ. Sometimes we are not better. Sometimes we are much worse. When uh, insulin was discovered in the 20s, within six months it was in, uh, uh, used as a drug in humans and it has saved millions of lives. When the steroids were discovered in the late 30s, early 1940s, they were almost immediately used within two years. Today the picture is completely different. Uh, the endogenous cannabinoids found in our body, we call them anandamide and 2-AG, they were discovered about 15 years ago. They definitely have very positive effects in animals, in the test tube, in animals. They have never been tested in humans. Neither anandamide nor 2-NG, endogenous compounds with very positive effects, they have never been administered to a human. I don't uh, uh, think that this is uh, uh, a medical advance. Omer writes, I suffer from post-trauma. I heard about recent success with regards to medical marijuana and PTSD. Uh, can marijuana really ease my symptoms? And here the answer is definitely yes. Uh, Post-trauma is a serious disease. It's a disease of memory. People that have post-trauma do not forget. Do not forget the terrible thing that may have happened to them. Somebody got killed next to them or uh, something else happened to them. They were involved in something that caused trauma and they do not forget it. Most people forget marijuana or ex the whole mechanism of marijuana action uh, helps forget. We sometimes think that forgetfulness is a bad thing. On the contrary, we have to forget. In these cases, the cases of post-trauma, people do not forget. Their cannabinoid system is uh, not functioning as it should. So uh, people have tried and the uh, effects are ex very positive. As a matter of fact, there has been a clinical trial, a clinical test in Canada with a compound which does the same as THC, a compound called Nabilone, <coughs> and 70% of the cases, most of them soldiers who had mm, PTSD, post-trauma, many, most of them, above 70% of them, could go back and slept well. Many of them said that they had slept they had never slept so well since they had post trauma and this we have heard also from patients that get uh, marijuana by smoking or eating and so on so my answer to this question is positively yes it affects positively uh, the ability to sleep and maybe some of the other effects of post trauma a question from itai he says i'm 22 I've had asthma since I was 9 or 10. How much is known about the use of cannabis to treat asthma? Unfortunately, very few human experiments have been done in this area. It is known that THC affects positively asthma, presumably by several mechanisms. Uh, in addition to the anti-inflammatory effect, it's also affecting some other mechanisms within the uh, lungs. And um, it is one of the most promising areas of cannabis use. Of course, 
uh, I wouldn't suggest that anybody with asthma should smoke because the actual smoking can cause an, an attack of asthma. But there are other ways to uh, ingest, to uh, get the drugs, and I'm sure that at some point, several years from now, they will be used. But at the moment, we do not have enough uh, human data uh, to back this, which is, again, uh, I'm very sorry to say, it should have been done years ago. The few experiments that have been performed are very positive. Many thanks for listening and viewing our program. I hope that those of you who asked uh, because of personal medical problems will feel better. And uh, I hope to hear from you again.